Hello, fellow athletes. So today we'll be talking about uh, introductions to proofs. Um, we're on, we want to compare that to other math courses. Uh, along with that, we'll be going through our proof writing wiki to answer uh, my midterm question. And lastly, we'll be uh, writing a clean proof and just uh, using what we what we do in the proof writing wiki and applying it to a clean proof. So first and foremost, I want to give a couple of examples of why um, proof writing is so much different than other math courses. So firstly, uh, restrictions. We're often under a lot of restrictions. Um, in algebra or calculus, we're not under those restrictions. Let's take the basic example of 2x equals 5. We know that 2 is an integer, or here, sorry, that's a CY, we're going to do integer. However, the result of this is a, a rational number. So we know that um, going from this, this is where the logic step is, um, we know that the number set or the integers are not closed under division, meaning if we use division on integers, when we might not get an integer out. So that's just one way where proof writing really enhances what you go like what you how you look at problems. Um, we can see that this doesn't really take any mental mental strain. This is muscle memory. We we've been doing this since kindergarten. We've been we've been adding, and subtracting, and dividing and multiplying since grade school. However, with proof writing, we have to look at what we have look at the tools that we have and make sure that we can Im implement them to get what we want to show. And so this is this is where the two stand out, like math courses and proof writing. This is where there's a division between mathematicians. Um, so to, uh, to make sure that we are on time, let's just start off with the proof writing wiki. Um, my question is, let B, let A and B be sets. Determine if it is true that P of A union P of B. Actually, my apologies. We're going to say P A union B is equal to P of A union P of B. So, to spoil it for you, it is not. Not true. Uh, step one is to formulate examples. So, in this case, I'm going to give you a counterexample of let A and B be disjoint sets. This means that A intersect B is the empty set. So, A is equal to 1. B is equal to the set 2. A union B is equal to 1, 2. And then the power of A union B is equal to the empty set. 1, 2, 
the set itself. One and two. While the other half, PA, is equal to the empty set and A itself, and PB is equal to the empty set and B itself. And the union of these two results in the empty set A and B, where A and B are 1, 2. You can see that these two, you can see that these two are not equal to each other. So when the two sets are destroyed, this does not work. However, we can see that every set, every every set in this set is in the other set. So my conjecture is let A and B be sets, then if P of A union P of B, then if P of A union P of B, oh, whoa, so then P of A is a subset. P of A union P of B is a subset of P of A union B. Step two is our if-then statement. So if X is in P of A union P of B, then X is in P of A union B. I add this so that we can understand like what we're doing here. We want to show that we know that if X is an element of P of A union P of B, then we know that we want to show that X is an, is, uh, an element of P of A union B. Now, so far, I haven't given you the definition of what a power set is. So we know that a power set is equal to the set of all sets, uh, of all subsets of a set. So we want to say two, where A is equal to one, two. We know, so not given to us, but using that logical step, once again, we see that x is, if x is an element of P of A, then x has to be a subset of A. This is important. This is very important for our proof. So, <clears throat> step three, extract the null. Our no is after our if, and it says that P of A union P of B, I'm going to say X is, a, is an element of, and let's go to the next page here. Step four says, expand the no, the no. And so X is in P of A union P of B. Uh, by definitions of union, we know that X is an element of P of A 
or an element of x is an element of p of b. My definition of power sets. We know that the x has to be a subset of a, or x has to be a subset of b. Now, step five. Our show is after after the if or the then statement. The then which is x is a an element of p of a union b which then we want to go ahead and expand x in the same manner right so x is a subset of a X is a subset of A union B by definition of power sets. We're working down here, so let's, let's put that in there so we know what we did there. And then we know that by definition of Union X is a subset of A or X is a subset of B. Now we have essentially solved our uh, our proof here because we're going to make a new if then statement using the expanded versions of our now and our show. And it says that if X is a subset of A or X is a subset of B, then X is a subset of A or X is a subset of B. Wow, look at that. Then they all, yeah, I know that for sure. So now we're going to write a formal proof. We're going to say let x be a set let x a and b be sets let x be an element in p a Union P B. So, uh, so sorry. Let's go back to here. Let X A and B be sets. Let we are going to show that P. A union P B is always a subset of P A union B. So, first and foremost, we're going to choose an element. Uh, we're going to say X. In this case, we already we already uh, established that X is in A. Let X be in the power set A, in the power set B. So this means this means. that X there exists 
then x and p of a union p of b that x is in p of a or x is in p of b and uh, that by definition of union. Now, uh, we also know if x is in p of a or x is in p of b that x is a subset of a or x is a subset of b by the definition by by definition of power sets. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Um, so, from here, we're going to say by definition. of union, we can collapse this down. We can say x is a subset of A union B. And then if x is a subset of A union B, by the definition of power sets, We can say X is an element of P A union B and we are done. And so this is basically just taking taking what I did as a prerequisite to my proof and putting it into complete sentences. Um, it really helps just because I can see what I'm using. Um, this is just personally. I you see I write down what I use to uh, expand my you know in my show and so then I can use that in my formal proofs. Um, this concludes my brief um, and my explanation and I hope you've learned something. Signing out.